Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Mike. Michael Savage. You're welcome to join the program. You can call us. Just dial 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Remember to log on to the website, michaelsavage.com. Celebrate America this 4th of July with Countdown to Mecca, the bestseller by Dr. Michael Savage. Available at the website. Makes a great 4th of July read. Also online. Also at the website, michaelsavage.com. Sign up for the Savage newsletter. Arrives two to three times a week right to your inbox. It's totally free. Just sign up for the Savage Newsletter at michaelsavage.com. A reminder, coming up July 2nd, the Savage Scholarship winners will be announced. 1,700 people submitted essays on the question, what it means to be an American. Five winners will receive $20,000 each, a total of $100,000 that Michael put into this. Again, that's coming up July 2nd. But as always, log on to the website, michaelsavage.com, for all the latest news and headlines. Well, today, speaking of huge news and headlines, in the country that used to be the United States, the Supreme Court delivered a major win to President Obama and his health care law. Washington Times with the story. By the way, you can read the story, the link directly off the website, Ruling the administration is lawfully doling out Obamacare subsidies in dozens of states despite contested language in the law that kicked off the legal saga with major political and economic ramifications. Six to three decision. The justice has said the Affordable Care Act allows tax credits to flow to Americans no matter where they live. Chief Justice John Roberts... And Justice Anthony Kennedy, yes, sided with the liberal wing of the court. Who was on our side, the side of the people? Justices Scalia, Clarence Thomas, and also Justice Alito. Now, we have a lot to get to. We'll get your reaction to it. A lot of sound. President spiking the ball in the uh, Oval Office over this. Again, one 855 400 Savage. Let's start off. This is the montage reaction to the Supreme Court decision. Today's ruling is a tragedy for the rule of law in this country. In a 6 3 decision, the Supreme Court has twisted and somersaulted on traditional rules of statutory interpretation and essentially allowed the IRS to rewrite the very statute that Congress enacted. Make no mistake about this. Today's decision has monumental significance. It means that the Affordable Care Act is not just the law of the land, it will remain the law of the land. We are thankful today that the courts upheld this and realized that affordable care is not just for I don't know. It's for everybody, and it should be. It would have impacted over 6 million people had they not agreed to this. But now we don't have to worry about this anymore. There are 37 states who could have been freed from Obamacare's mandates and penalties who will not now be free. And their employers will not be free from the mandates and penalties. And there will likely be fewer job opportunities and lower hours. So this was an opportunity for freedom and the rule of law that the Supreme Court miss. Disgraceful. Let's hear. This is President Obama on MSNBC, clip two, the Affordable Care Act, here to stay. It has changed and in some cases saved American lives. It set this country on a smarter, stronger course. And today, after more than 50 votes in Congress to repeal or weaken this law, after a presidential election based in part on preserving or repealing this law, after multiple challenges to this law before the Supreme Court, The Affordable Care Act is here to stay. Disgraceful. Conservatives steamed at Chief Justice Roberts' betrayal 
Josh Gernstein with the story. They begrudgingly gave him a pass for the first Obamacare ruling. Not this time. Conservatives left baffled after Chief Justice John Roberts saved Obamacare three years ago. And today, as the George W. Bush appointee again helped President Barack Obama signature legislative achievement avoid a potentially devastating blow, they felt betrayed. Adding to the sting, the Chief Justice wasn't just along for the ride. When the court's ruling allowed the law's insurance subsidies to be offered nationwide emerged, he wrote the majority opinion and delivered it from the bench. What was the reaction within the White House? Well, you want, as I said, you want to hear about spiking the football in the end zone. Let's hear. This is White House communication, Jen Psaki. I can promise you there were many hugs, high fives. There may have been some happy dances. I'm not going to name any names. Uh, but certainly uh, there was elation here today. But really, this is about the American people. And our focus is on moving forward. Let's turn the page. Let's put this battle behind us. And let's move forward uh, with, uh, with implementing health care uh, all across the country. Happy dances. Happy dances. Who's listening right now is doing a happy dance over this? Call in 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Is there anyone listening that is happy with their with their health plan? Anybody? And then defeated in this way. We're going to start off with Andrew on line one. He's listening in Florida. Andrew, you're up first on the Savage Nation. Hello, Andrew. Hey, how you doing, bud? Well, it's a tough day, Andrew. Uh, yeah, it is. It's This is my comment, and I don't understand this. Um, how is it that these laws can be interpreted in ways that just simply satisfy the justice at that time? I mean, we can't continue to keep allowing, you know, ruling theocrats to just dictate behavior to us as they see fit or interpret laws in ways that uphold their previous rulings. I mean, this guy's ego obviously came in. You know, instead of reading the law and reading the text established by the states, it clearly has no ambiguity. And uh, it's just, I don't understand it. It's, you know, them basically doing what they want, knowing that we can't do anything about it. That's well said, Andrew. Thank you for the call. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. We're going to play some more sound bites. Again, as you can imagine, Harry Reid, President Obama, this is a huge day for them. Let's go to line five. Barbara is listening in Connecticut on WDRC. Barbara, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Yeah. uh, At this point, Congress is irrelevant. We we don't have uh, a Congress that can write laws anymore. The Supreme Court can rewrite any law that Congress uh, writes. And I think they, they will enforce any law. The Supreme Court will enforce any law that they feel like enforcing. And uh, the American people are now irrelevant. The American taxpayers are irrelevant. And uh, this is a, a very bad day for our country, along with uh, them voting for the TPP, I don't, the Trans- Trans-Pacific Partnership. That is a horrible thing for this country. And now we have no Congress. They have, they have uh, nothing to say. No one will listen to them. And I think that Justice Roberts, must be uh, being um, threatened or something. I don't know why he would do this. He, Barbara, why would, why would he betray the American people in this way? I think he's being threatened by something. He has something in his past, and they have him. Just like the IRS is going to have all of us. The IRS is going to be, they're going to be the ones that are going to be uh, manipulating uh, Obamacare. And uh, they will allow people to get to get uh, taken care of that they like, and the people they don't like, that don't feel are for their cause, will not get the same kind of care. Hmm. Barbara, thank you for the call. One eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. Well, Justice Scalia, I'll tell you what he said in just a while. In a dissent, he summarized from the bench. Justice Scalia said, "We should start calling this law SCOTUS care." for Supreme Court of the United States CARE, using the acronym of the Supreme Court. He said his colleagues have twice stepped in to save the law from what he considered worthy challenges, and it is. Let's go to line four. In other news, we will touch on, uh, boy, the battle continues over the Confederate battle flag. Wayne is in on line four calling from Oklahoma, listening on KOKC. 
Wayne, welcome. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, um, I was born in Virginia and moved out here two years ago, but I was raised under the Confederate flag and have family members. I fly it. I mean, almost every, everybody that I know flies it. I've got a lot of black friends that, that also fly it. So where, where, where they get the hatred from, I have no clue. Well, you saw the photo of the gunman, correct? Yes. Yes. And you know that, you know, for years, the, the Klan have... Have uh, they have kind of used that and wrapped themselves in it? But but you know, Wayne, w- w- one of the the elements of this is I- I- if you take that away, you know, the, it seems to be that under the surface the, there was this feeling. Now you're saying you have black friends that fly the fa- flag. Yeah. All, all we're hearing is that that there were you know a lot of people of color say that uh, whenever they see the flag, they they think of whoever's flying it as a racist. <laughs> That is so not not true. What what does the Confederate flag mean to you? Heritage. I mean, I've I've done my family genealogy back to the 14, 1400s, and I've had uncles, great uncles, that died in it, in it. And you you feel so? You feel it's your heritage, and that's it's under attack. Yes. Yeah, and and that there's no connection between the shooting and the flag. I wouldn't think so. No. I mean, yeah. if he'd put up a Muslim flag, you know. Well, he he didn't. I don't even know. He didn't put up the Muslim flag, and uh, it is being compared though to the SWAT sticker or the Nazi flag. You certainly don't see it that way, Wayne. No, no. Yeah, thank you for the call, folks. One eight five five four hundred Savage. One eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. Again, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, taking your phone calls. Today, President Obama spoke out and said the Affordable Care Act is here to stay. If the partisan challenge to this law had succeeded, millions of Americans would have had thousands of dollars worth of tax credits taken from them. For many, insurance would have become unaffordable again. Many would have become uninsured again. Ultimately, everyone's premiums could have gone up. America would have gone backwards. And that's not what we do. That's not what America does. We move forward. So today is a victory for hardworking Americans all across this country whose lives will continue to become more secure in a changing economy because of this law. This is not a victory for hardworking Americans, not even close. Line six, Henry is listening in Brooklyn on WABC. Henry, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, hello. Uh, My children's pediatrician, visited him last week and he, he informed us that he will be closing shop soon because doctors can't keep up with all this bureaucracy. So Obama, when he promised that if you like your doctor, you can keep it, right, I can keep it, but he forced the doctors to go out of business. And my doctor told me the way it will become is only big practices will stay open and that doctors won't know the patient personally because it will be like a big practice. So it's a sad thing that everything is going to be changing for the worse, and everything was just a lie to us. It really was, Henry. Thank you for the call. I mean, I, any doctor I talk to, they'll say their work is up 30%. They're not making more money. The patients they're forced to take are the people that they don't save, they don't work, they're not responsible the way you are, they don't take care of the family or themselves. Doctors have told me the patients they see because of Obamacare are the sickest of the sick. People haven't seen doctors in years. They smoke. They're obese. And it just it's a greater workload for them. They hate Obamacare. And now today, because of the Supreme Court decision, unfortunately, it is here to stay. Robert on line seven is listening in Maryland on W. All right, we'll go to line eight. Sam is in D.C. listening on WMAL. Hello, Sam. Hi, how you doing? Very well, Sam. Go right ahead. Yeah, I just I think it's funny that he Obama says that this is uh, a win for you know hardworking Americans. Fact of the matter is that my company that I work for is is not able to provide me with as good as health care plan as they would have been 
It's the only people this is benefiting the lazy people in America, people who don't want to work. Everybody that has worked and paid for, you know, gotten insurance through their jobs for however many years, they're the ones that are going to suffer. It's just disgusting that we just let this happen. And I'm just appalled. I, that's all I want to say. Thank you. No, it's absolutely uh, true, Sam. And I, I, again, like I said, I don't know anyone that's happy about this. You know who is happy about it? Let's hear clip nine. Harry Reid says the Supreme Court ruled against Republicans. Today, this great country of ours, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, has survived the latest partisan attempt to deny health coverage to working families. Millions of working families won today. America won today. The Supreme Court ruled against Republicans who were seeking to strip six and a half million Americans of the subsidies that enable them to buy health insurance. It's the law of this nation. Move on. Move on. Line two is Glenn listening in Winston, North Carolina on WFNC. Glenn, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Glenn. Yes, sir. Um, I guess evidently Justice Roberts is the new David Souter. You know, he was presented as a conservative, but obviously he's either a leftist or they have dirt on him that he doesn't want coming out in public. But this is just a crime. What a betrayal, Glenn, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, what a week this has been, especially thank you for the call, Glenn. Folks, when you, you, you think someone, I mean, we, we know who you can depend on, but then to bail it out like that again, 1-855-400-SAVAGE is the phone number. Again, log on to the website. It's michaelsavage.com. Let's go. Uh, and now coming up, we're going to have more headlines. There's more on the flag controversy. Also, Donald Trump remains in the news. More headlines for Donald Trump. Good Wall Street Journal article about Donald Trump saying that for businessman Trump, the politician Donald Trump is not good for business in any way. And we'll tell you about that as well. 1-855-400-7282. Again, John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage, you're welcome to join the program. Just call us at 1 855 400 7282. Fourth of July, be here before you know it. Celebrate America this July 4th. How about Dr. Savage's new bestseller, Countdown to Mecca? Available right now. You can order it right now on the website, michaelsavage.com. Log on where you can also sign up for the Savage newsletter. Arrives two to three times a week, right to your inbox. And it's totally free. Sign up for the Savage Newsletter at michaelsavage.com. All the latest news, headlines. I'm looking at it right now. Some of the headlines. Supremes ignore language of law. Uphold Obamacare subsidies. Another headline. Kids create salt black markets in cafeterias. Cafeterias due to Michelle Obama's lunch rules. Have you heard about that? Top women in U.S. media scourged in hit list. And also, keep in mind, coming up July 2nd, that's going to be the big announcement. The Savage Scholarship Winners. You can see the story and the headline on that as well at michaelsavage.com. They will be announced July 2nd. 1,700 applicants submitted essays. The question, what it means to be an American. Five winners will receive $20,000 each, total of $100,000 that Dr. Michael Savage generously put into it. Also checking the Drudge Report. Of course, the top of the Drudge Report, the Supreme Court, and Obamacare. Hospitals, insurance stocks, surging. Quote, in this instance, the context and structure of the act compels us to depart from what would otherwise be the most natural reading of the pertinent statutory phrase. Quote from Justice Scalia, words no longer have meaning. The court favors some laws over others. Supremes love Obamacare, and the court moves left. Also, more headlines on, boy, the situation in Greece sounds desperate. And Univision is dumping Donald Trump's USA pageant over the insulting remarks he made about Mexican immigrants. Actually, let's hear the comment that Donald Trump made. Now, this was at his kickoff speech when he was announcing he was going to run. He talked about the wall. But let's hear 
clip 25. This is what they're so upset about. I only tell the truth. And frankly, Mexico is sending not their best and not their finest. We're getting drug dealers. We're getting sex offenders. We're getting tremendous problems. I speak to border guards. I met two border guards last week. And they say what's coming into this country is not their best. Believe me, it's their worst. And we're getting it. Now, I'm sure good people are coming in also. But they're just walking past security. They have no checks, no balances. So whether it costs me votes or not, I don't care. I tell the truth. Well, President Obama spoke out today on MSNBC saying our grandkids will ask us if there was really a time we discriminated against pre-existing conditions. Millions of Americans who I hear from every single day will continue to receive the tax credits that have given about eight in 10 people who buy insurance on the new marketplaces the choice of a health care plan that costs less than $100 a month. And when it comes to pre-existing conditions, someday our grandkids will ask us if there was really a time when America discriminated against people who get sick because that is something this law has ended for good. Let's go to line seven. Amy is listening in New Jersey on WABC. Amy, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Amy. Yeah, hi. Um, You know, I think it's very important to have run a small business for your president. You have to understand what it is to meet a payroll. The budget isn't endless. You have to follow a budget. Uh, I go to the grocery store. I pay in cash. And then I see other individuals who are not uh, speaking English. Uh, they pay with a credit card, and that credit card is from the state. I can tell you, as the owner of a small business, it costs me $35,000 a year just to insure my family. Just to insure my family. $35,000 uh, a year, Amy. Think how outrageous that is. It is. It is. I think the concept of pre-existing condition is a good one, but uh, as the current in the current state, really... Uh, they're incentivizing not working, not working. It's easier not to work than it is to work. And I talked to the grocery store cashiers. They're very nice and hard working, but the most they can work now is 25 hours a week in the entire store. This is a big store. The only person who is a regular salary more than 25 hours is the manager. That's it. Oh, so there's terrible. Obamacare has incentivized not working. Right. And in terms of voting, I'll vote for anybody who has a job and who pays taxes. I object to people not having jobs yes. and not paying taxes. Well, Amy, that thank you for the call, Amy. You know that that's part of the problem. Look at that. Amy's paying thirty five thousand a year, and all and there's plenty of people that are not paying anything. Line five is Mike in Fayetteville, Arkansas, listening on KFAY. Mike, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Mike. Hey, how are you, sir? Very well. Thirty-five thousand is a lot. I pay four hundred and twenty dollars a month to my company insurance to have the best plan my company offers. And before Obamacare, my deductible was fifteen hundred dollars. Now it's four thousand dollars, and I have to have a procedure done in August. And guess what? I have to pay for it out of pocket because it doesn't meet my deductible. How's that affordable, Obama? My grandchildren will stand in line and talk about pre-existing. And they'll also say, do we ever have to stand in line to see our doctor? Well, th- thank you thank you for the call, Mike. You know, this business of, of telling children, is, is he also going to explain to children that there are some people working and some people that just want to get everything for free and some people that decided that they're just not going to work and they didn't work and they didn't cover themselves? How many people listen? Do you think he likes paying that? Do you think Amy likes paying the 35000 a year? I mean, there are those that are responsible and then those that are just relying on him to pave the way for them in every way. Line three is Joe, who's listening on WJR in Detroit. Joe, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, John. Good to talk to you. Thank you, Um, Joe. Listen, this was not a victory for hardworking Americans. I'm a hardworking American. I'm a United Auto Worker. And next year when the Cadillac tax kicks in, this is going to cost me about $800 a year, Ugh. additional taxes. Hmm. Terrible. And and how is it, you know, the hardworking Americans, Joe, they're the ones that have insurance, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but you, you have to have it not only cover yourself, 
cover your children, cover your family. That's that's being a responsible adult. He's rewarding people who are not responsible. Right, Joe? Uh, correct. Correct. But, yeah, and at the same time, he's hurting people who are who are out there, uh, the quintessential hardworking Americans out there busting their butts every day. And uh, look at how much more can we be taxed. Yeah. How much more can we afford that's exactly. Joe, thank you for the call. Let's go to line one. Barry is listening in Fort Myers on KBOI. Barry, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Yeah, I, I think what happened with the Supreme Court is unbelievably disgusting and a disgrace. They basically nullified the Senate and the House. They can interpret any law to anything they want. So they're making laws, and that's a dictatorship. This is this something so wrong with this it's not even funny it scares the heck out of me what they just did because they can interpret anything to mean anything that's right barry barry and and no recourse right barry i mean I, even the justice is saying suddenly words have no meaning barry where do you go from here uh you go to a whole i mean we we definitely got to change this is republicans as well as democrats they've all screwed up terribly and and even getting Roberts in was a Bush thing, and th- this was such a mistake. This man is dictatorial. Uh, it scares me. I've never seen this country. I'm not a young man. I've never seen this country this way in my life. I fear for my children and my grandchildren. I agree, Barry. Thank you for the call. Let's go to, uh, we're going to play clip five. This is President Obama. Thanks to Obamacare, many are paying, according to him, 1800 less in premiums the uninsured rate in america is the lowest since we began to keep records and that is something we can all be proud of meanwhile the law has helped hold the price of health care to its slowest growth in 50 years if your family gets insurance through your job so you're not using the affordable care act you're still paying about 1800 dollars less per year on average than you would be if we hadn't done anything Absolutely outrageous. Let's go to line four. Bill is listening in North Carolina on WFNC. Bill, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Bill. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, paying less and getting less. I'm a veteran. and go to the uh, utilize VA medical care here in North Carolina. And as you know, as people should know, uh, the VA health care system is... Uh, uh, subscribes, of course, and is within the purview of Obamacare. Uh, you know, I went and I, you know, my knee, I need to have a knee surgery. I went in, didn't see a physician, saw a physician assistant, said, and she said, you know, I saw the x ray, so to her, she said, well, I said, well, I'm in, it looks like it's bone on bone on me. She, says, I, she said, quote, you'd have to become crawling in here to get a knee replacement. And I know knee replacements are. They do their thousands, tens of thousands of them done, uh, and of course, they're, you know, and like anything else, there's, uh, you know, hazards, uh, you know, and, and possibility of infection, blah blah blah. But it's highly, it's highly successful and uh, profitable um, uh, procedure, and I'm denied that. You know what they're pushing on me? They're pushing drugs, more drugs, more drugs. Um, the quality of care uh, compared to in the 60s and 70s, when I was a teen and early 20s. Yes, there just isn't any. It reminded me of L.A. County USC uh, Healthcare uh, or Medical Center back in the 70s when I took a friend there once. What a nightmare. Hmm. And that is what general health care is coming to be like. And by the way, I work for the VA health system. Veteran. I'm a veteran as well. And when I retired oh, two years ago, there were a number of doctors, and we were talking about this, who were, believe me, they were signing out, getting out of it, you know, and if not the health care provision going into something in a private right. uh, setting. Now, not. now, Bill, thank you for the call, Bill. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, I, I, as I said, I don't know anyone that is happy about the plan, but you wanna, if you want to sum up the attitude of the first couple, are you ready? It happened last night. Remember, it's unscripted moments. It's those unscripted moments, whether it be the first lady, Michelle Obama, saying, you know, for the first time in my life, I'm actually proud of my country. And how about the, the, the did you ever hear the story of Michelle Obama was complaining, apparently inside the White House, that she doesn't get paid as first lady? Did you hear about that? But last night, this was one of those unscripted moments. And we're going to play it for you. This is clip 14. So the president is hosting an LGBT pride event, and he starts to get heckled, and he's yelling back at the heckler. But let's roll it. Listen to President Obama from last night. I told you that the civil rights of LGBT Americans is... President Obama! Yeah, hold on a second. 
Okay, you know what? No, 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 no. Hey. Yeah, listen. You're my house. My house. You know, it's not their house. It's our house. That belongs to the people. You, you're the current occupant of that house. He should have said, this is our house. This house belongs to the people. This is a house you show respect. It's my house. No, it's not your house. It's our house. See, this is the problem. And in, in that moment, all right, so of course, he's being heckled by someone. Who knows? At the White House LGBT Pride event. And then, no, no, you're in my house. No, you you know, they're not in your It's not your house. It's not your country. You're not the king. It's not the kingdom. It's not the palace. And it's not your house. Line eight is Mike. He's listening in New Jersey on WABC. Mike, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Uh, hi, John. Um, yeah, I don't know where President Obama is coming off with $1,800 savings. Uh, first of all, um, our premium, we, our, our policy, at ins- our, our employer policy was canceled last December because it's in that pediatric vision. Now, not one person in our company has a kid under 18, so nobody cared. But the replacement policy that our employer was able to find that was basically equivalent, except it doubled the deductible, and it had a 31% premium increase. And certain procedures that were covered before are now covered under the deductible. So we wound up with a $500 extra bill. I figure it's going to cost me between $3,500 and $5,000 more this year. Well, and, and, and Mike, and, and that's the president. His spin is that you're going to save 1800 Thank you for the call. one 400 savage Again, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Remember, log on to our website, it's michaelsavage.com. Let's go to line two. Scott is listening in Winston, North Carolina on WFNC. Scott, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Very well. Go right ahead, Scott. Yes, sir. I've been a little disappointed in the show this week. Um, Why is that, sir? Uh, all the stuff about the Confederate flag, you keep talking about perception, perception. We should take it down because of perception. That matters more than facts. Well... You know, the Northeast establishment that controls most of the media in this country is responsible for creating the false perceptions that are out there. And they're the same ones who create the perception that people that listen to this show are a bunch of right-wing nuts. So if I should take down my flag, maybe I should stop listening to your show. Scott, could you point to one elected official, or how about a Republican running for president that says keep that flag up? I don't expect an elected official to, since when do they have any guts? They have all the power. They're the ones that are saying, take it down. So what you need is someone that would, well, that's all I'm looking for is one. I don't have a dog in the fight on this, but you can't ignore. Scott, I'm sure you feel awful, like we all do, for the nine people that were murdered, correct? Well, yes, I do. But, sir, I can, if you go online and, and Google Klan with U.S. flag, you can find a picture of half a million Klansmen in D.C. in, in the 1925 rally there and every one of them is carrying their own individual u.s stars and stripes that was a that was a a long time ago and you, you can't ignore that picture with the alleged shooter standing right there waving the confederate battle flag but someone from the south has got to step up then one eight five five four hundred savage john DePietro sitting in for dr michael savage this is the savage nation Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. Welcome in. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to join the program. Call us, 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Make sure you log on to the website, michaelsavage.com. Sign up today for the Savage Newsletter. The Savage Newsletter arrives two to three times a week right into your inbox. It's totally free. You sign up. Go to the website, michaelsavage.com, all the latest news, headlines, and you'll see the link to sign up for the Savage Newsletter. While you're there, you'll also see Celebrate America coming up July 4th. You're relaxing by the pool. You're with friends, family, whoever at the beach, and you're reading the latest bestseller by Dr. Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca. You can order it right through the website, and also you'll also see the link for the Savage Scholarship winners. They're going to be announced July 2nd. How about that? 1,700 applicants submitted essays, and it's simple. What does it mean to be an American? There'll be five winners. They'll receive $20,000 each, a total of $100,000 that Michael Savage put into all of this. Well, it's a big day, not a great day, but a big day as the Supreme Court has decided to ignore the language right in front of them and instead rule in favor of Obamacare. And what's the president's reaction? As you can imagine, let's hear him. This is President Obama spiking the ball in the end zone, saying the Affordable Care Act is here to stay. It has changed and in some cases saved American lives. It set this country on a smarter, stronger course. And today, after more than 50 votes in Congress to repeal or weaken this law, after a presidential election based in part on preserving or repealing this law, after multiple challenges to this law before the Supreme Court, the Affordable Care Act is here to stay. If the partisan challenge to this law had succeeded, millions of Americans would have had thousands of dollars worth of tax credits taken from them. For many, insurance would have become unaffordable again. Many would have become uninsured again. Ultimately, everyone's premiums could have gone up. America would have gone backwards. And that's not what we do. That's not what America does. We move forward. So today is a victory for hardworking Americans all across this country whose lives will continue to become more secure in a changing economy because of this law. Disgraceful. You know, you also can tell in the language, you know, saved American lives. Hardworking Americans. Are there anyone hardworking that is in favor of Obamacare that is listening right now? Who are these hardworking Americans that he's talking about? You know, many people accuse this president of being who? A king. He thinks he's an ambassador. He's the appointed, the anointed one. Well, last night was full display, and then we'll go to your phone calls. But last night, the president was hosting the LGBT Pride event at the White House. He actually started to get heckled. And listen to what he says at the very end as he yells at the heckler. I've told you that the civil rights of LGBT Americans is... Yeah, hold on a second. I, I, okay, you know what? No, 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 no. Hey. Yeah, listen. You're in my house. You're in my house. It's actually not his house. The house belongs to the people. But in case you're wondering, what happened? What happened on the Supreme Court? Who betrayed us? Justice Roberts, total betrayal with conservatives. People have a right to be upset. The Supreme Court ruled six to three in favor of upholding Obamacare. Let's go to line two. Ralph is listening in Manhattan on WABC. Ralph, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Well, John, a little message to Mr. Obama. I don't need a savior. I don't want a savior. This country was about the individual, John. This country was great because we relied on ourselves to pick ourselves up from our 
those proverbial bootstraps and go forward, not to have someone help you up. Yes, to help to help someone is a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. But that's by choice. I don't want to be helped unless I ask. And I don't want anybody to, 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 to beg me to help them either. And if that sounds coarse, it sounds hard, that's too bad. You know, John, there are sycophants in this country that, are, that still pay homage to Mr. Obama. He can rob a bank in the middle of the day in Midtown Manhattan, where I stand right now, and they would still go out. If he can run for another term, they'd vote for him again, John. This is how stupid and ill-informed. See, the talk radio, I don't want to go on, but the talk radio crowd is the most informed, John, but when you're to the, to the ordinary American, they, they see a guy giving things away, and then it's very hard to beat, and this is going to happen with Hillary coming up in 2016, very hard to beat someone who's very free to give things away. John. Right, well, We're, and also, Ralph, good uh, good call, but also but giving away other people's, right? I mean, other people's things, pay, that we have to pay for it. Notice they never pay for it. one 855 Four hundred savage one eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. We'll also pay. The president claims that everyone's going to be saving eighteen hundred dollars as a result of this. I mean, do you know of anyone that is saving that kind of money on Obamacare? Let's go to line four. Steve is listening. Uh, Steve is on line four on W R T H. Oh, excuse me, Fort Worth on W B A P. Steve's up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Steve. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Don. Very welcome. Um, I've been a hard-working man. I'm, a, I'm a, I've been a bricklayer for 43 years, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm having knee replacement surgery next Thursday. I'm very fortunate that I'm going to get in under the the deadline, uh, which I feel is coming. I, I just uh, my insurance premiums. I pay three hundred and four dollars a week. And it's through my company. And there's been times when I couldn't afford insurance when I was younger. I was self-employed. I, and I don't know what road this country is going down, but uh, it, I'm at a loss. I'm a, I'm a true American. I don't. I'm not a racist. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just a guy out here working. And you're doing hard work. Yes. That is hard work. Yes, sir. How long have you been doing that? 43 years. That is back-breaking work, and you don't sound like you complain about it either. How often do you call in sick? Uh, never. Yeah. Well, never. see, that, that and that's the thing, Steve. Thank you for the call. You know, someone like that are the type of people. The president is not taking care of people like that. The president is not taking care of people like that. You know, I also want to um, share with you Senator Sheldon Whitehouse from Rhode Island speaking out. Now, think of everything that's going on in the nation right now, or even in the world. And Senator Sheldon Whitehouse decides to speak out on global warming. That is his big issue. And he's going after global warming skeptics and says he hopes the Justice Department will sue vast denial Apparatus. Let's hear him. This vast denial apparatus that propagates the false doubt, that props up the phony science, that gets these yahoos who can't survive peer-reviewed, peer-reviewed scrutiny onto Fox News, onto the cable shows, saying that they're scientists, they create an artificial conflict about this, and that's why I think there's doubt. That's one of the reasons I hope that we get another lawsuit out of the Department of Justice like the one that they brought against the tobacco industry that showed that that whole fraudulent scam was a racketeering enterprise and held them accountable for it. You know, so you can't, that's Senator Sheldon White, so you can't disagree with what they're saying. And suddenly now, look at, folks, look at the crowd. Now it's thrown into Fox News. Now it's into the cable shows. I mean, how long has this been going on that people are saying that that is not the case with global warming? And now it's, it's, it's politics. And now lawsuits, and, and uh, it's just it's just endless on that side. Line 8 is Annie, listening in the Bronx on WABC. Annie, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, thank you, John. Welcome. Um, I'm basically a, a, a pretty fearless person, but I feel like that Zeppelin song, No Quarters, 
I feel we have no quarters. Our voices have no resonance. We have two major traitors, I feel, in my opinion, in the past five to six years, and that has been Roberts and Colin Powell, not because they voted in the way that they did, but because they would rather go against their own integrity, their own laws of, of integrity, and do that which they know is wrong for us, and they did it at the last minute. And if you see Obama here again, this is his last term. This is why he sounds like a street person as he's answering this heckler. So what we have here is a very, very arrogant individual, and we are supposed to entrust major pivotal bills no like way. immigration no and, way uh, trade are we insane you know yeah, thank you for the calling uh, uh, justice roberts that's the one that is uh so disappointing line six is john listing in jacksonville on wbob john you're up on the savage nation hello hey how you doing i'd like to make a comment about the confederate flag yes sir i think that it should be taken down uh, i think that if people are afraid of that flag. It should be taken down, and I think that man should be executed for what he did. But my comment is this. When I grew up, I'm originally from Philadelphia, and I'm living in Florida now, and I grew up in in Philadelphia at the time, had black militant Muslims to sit on the city hall steps with loudspeakers, chanting racial slurs towards every white person that walked by. And my comment is, is that are they going to be held just as accountable as that man was that shot those people as far as the Confederate flag being taken down on state property? They were on city property shouting these racist epithets at all the white people that went by. And I think it's just such a double standard that, you know, all the people that believe in that Confederate flag, I don't believe in it because I was born up north. But well, John, John, you know, John, you don't even have to go back to thank you for the call from Philadelphia. How about the fact that someone like Sharpton was nonstop on the news uh, going after the police and encouraging violence against law enforcement? And then, you know, look what happened. The police are under attack in this country. It's a completely double double standard. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. More of your phone calls coming up. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. This is the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can call into the program, one 855 400 Savage, 1 855 400 7282. A new low for CNN. CNN, let's listen, likens white supremacy to ISIS, saying in a quote, in a lot of ways, they were almost identical. They promise a better life, purity, a way to erase modernity, and get rid of people who don't think like them. Song and words, they tell their followers to fight for what they believe in. Sound familiar? Are there similarities between, for example, white supremacist groups here in the United States and ISIS? Well, in a lot of ways, they're almost identical. Think how ridiculous that is. One 20-year-old maniac that goes into a church with a gun, you're going to compare him to white supremacists and the way we're watching ISIS systematically behead people and drown people? Let's go out to your calls. Line two, Adam is listening on WMAC in Georgia. Adam, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Adam. How are you doing today, John? Very well, Adam. Go right ahead. Well, I'd like to talk about this uh, rebel flag or Confederate flag or whatever. Everybody keeps calling it. I think that it should be up to the people of the state. Now, I live in Georgia. I should. Be, why should the government like Obama, stick his nose in our business. Now, that flag, to me, is an American flag that my forefathers fought for. Now, this guy, 20-year-old guy who killed people, yep. I feel sorry for each and every one of their families. I pray for them. Now, if that gentleman, I hate to even call him that, 
if he was to had an American flag wrapped around him, would we want to ban it, too? Well, first of all, do you fly the Confederate battle flag at him? No, sir, I do not. You don't. Do they fly at a town hall where you live? No, sir, I, I do not. But I they think don't. the state ought to have the right for their people to vote on it. I think they... Of, I, 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 I have no problem. I mean, I think the state does. Thank you for the call, Adam. I think the state does have the right. The problem is anyone that's in elected office right now, they all seem to be saying, whether it be the governor of Alabama or the governor of South Carolina, they're taking it down. Let's go to line nine. Gino is listening in the Bronx on WABC. Gino's up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Yeah, I would like to say that defunding Obamacare is the only last resort left. But since I know, and you know, and all of us know, that the gutless weasels in the Republican Party who have caved on every single issue that the Bolshevik thought police has given us and have won, I say it's now time to retaliate. Every single gutless weasel in South Carolina, starting with the governor, Turncoat Haley, and then the two other weasels in the U.S. Senate from South Carolina, those three need to have recall elections against them because this way... You send a message, and especially in South Carolina, in the primary coming up next February, the conservatives are going to have to make their last stand because this is getting to the point where we cannot tolerate any more of this crap. The Supreme Court, remember who betrayed you. It now wasn't just John Roberts, a W. Bush appointee. It was also a Reagan appointee. Mr. Kennedy, who's been there for 28 years, he sides with the Bolshevik left-wingers on that court much more often than he cited with Scalia, uh, Alito, and Rehnquist when he was on the court. Well, today he was, both of them were, but especially Justice Roberts. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. A lot more ahead. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Remember, celebrate America this July 4th. Dr. Savage's new thriller and bestseller, Countdown to Mecca. Hey, you can order it right off the website, michaelsavage.com. Log on, michaelsavage.com. All your latest news and headlines. While you're there, you can also sign up for the Savage newsletter. Sign up right at michaelsavage.com. You'll see the link. It arrives two to three times a week right into your inbox. Totally free. Sign up for the Savage Newsletter, and you'll also see the link right at the website for the Savage Scholarship winners. Now, that's coming up July 2nd, 1,700 applications submitted, and the essay is on what does it mean to be an American. Five winners will receive $20,000 each, a total of $100,000. Now, keep in mind, that's $100,000 that Michael Savage put in. So that's coming up July 2nd. Again, you'll see the link at the website, michaelsavage.com, where you can also log on for some of the latest headlines, like hackers stole secrets of U.S. government workers' sex lives. From the Daily Beast, already being described as the worst hack of the U.S. government in history, got mar- just got much worse. A senior U.S. official has confirmed foreign hackers compromise intimate personal details of an un- untold number of government workers. Also, the story Jeb Bush now has a Supreme Court problem. His response to the Supreme Court upholding Obamacare is notable for a bit of curious wordplay, which may hint at some of the political headaches this decision will cause him. I also like this story. and We'll take calls on this if you like. But California Assembly votes to end personal belief religious exemptions for vaccinating school children. Sacramento B with the story. The California Assembly has passed Senate Bill 277, which would require school children to be fully vaccinated by ending exemptions based on personal belief or religion. Are you one of those people that you don't vaccinate your children? Call in. We'll give you a chance to argue about that. And then also more news on the James Holmes, who's the Colorado theater shooter. And don't forget also, check out the Drudge Report. Drudge Report, of course, filled 
with headlines of the day, whether it be about the Supreme Court ruling on Obamacare, also on Donald Trump. We'll play some of his sound. Speaking of Obamacare, let's go to clip one. This is a montage now, reactions of people reacting, obviously, to the Supreme Court decision regarding Obamacare. Today's ruling is a tragedy for the rule of law in this country. In a 6-3 decision, the Supreme Court has twisted and somersaulted on traditional rules of statutory interpretation and essentially allowed the IRS to rewrite the very statute that Congress enacted. Make no mistake about this. Today's decision has monumental significance. It means that the Affordable Care Act is not just the law of the land, it will remain the law of the land. We are thankful today that the courts upheld this and realized that affordable care is not just for, I don't know, it's for everybody and it should be. It would have impacted over six million people had they not agreed to this, but now we don't have to worry about this anymore. There are 37 states who could have been freed from Obamacare's mandates and penalties who will not now be free, and their employers will not be free from the mandates and penalties, and there will likely be fewer job opportunities and lower hours. So this was an opportunity for freedom and the rule of law that the Supreme Court missed. It's also the story Here is who's still defending the Confederate flag and the many reasons they give. In the weeks since a gunman shot and killed nine people inside an African-American church in Charleston, the future of the Confederate flag in public spaces become a flashpoint of debate. It appears it could come down in many places. Here's who's still defending it and the reasons they give. This is by Janelle Ross. My ancestors fought and died under this flag. Our heritage is under attack said the commander-in-chief of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Now, former Senator, by the way, Jim Webb, likely presidential candidate. He's one of the first ones who is now defending it. Uh, Another uh, argument, the opposition doesn't understand the history of the South or the meaning of the Confederate flag. Ann Coulter is taking uh, that side. Ben Jones is taking that side. The Confederate flag is no different than any any other artifact. South Carolina step, uh, State Rep. Mike Reichall, and also the uh, argument that there's no connection between the shooting and the flag, but it still seems to be more and more uh, just it's the opposition. The strength is with the opposition. What do you think? Give us a call, 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go to line eight. Paul is listening in Queens on WABC. Paul, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello, Mr. Petro. I was listening to... Who was that uh, congressman or senator talking about the climate deniers? Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. Okay, so Mr. Sheldon Whitehouse uh, should be sued because they were talking about cigarettes that have him, you know, that uh, they, they sued uh, cigarette companies for that. Tobacco smoke that comes out of that is not carbon dioxide, that's, you know, burning. So they never did anything. They've caused a lot more people with cancer. And then they have bus companies. Flooring everybody around. In New York City, we have hundreds of thousands of buses schooling kids when they can just walk to the nearest school. It's a billion-dollar industry. And all, that, all the carbon monoxide coming out of those yellow buses cause probably more traffic, uh, more, you know, pollution than anything. Pollution than, than any, anything else. And again, he, thank you for the call. He is, um, he is one of those people, folks, that has made it his mission. He gives a week, a speech every single week on global warming, and now just wants to up the rhetoric. Let's go to line three. Andy is listening in Georgia on WMAC. Andy, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, John. Nice job. Phil. Thank you. Um, listen, I want to comment on the health care bill, but I've got to tell you, sitting here on hold listening to these calls, I just I want to scream, and I've had it, because I... Yeah, I feel like the network, you know, the network guy who says I'm bad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore because I really think that Obama's right, that it is his house. The people, the people don't own that house anymore, just like the people don't own anything else. The people don't have anything else. We don't have representation. We don't have a constitution. We're losing our rights. And it, it's, I'm up to here with it. And I, you know, I want the progressives to look at me as a white male, 46 years old, father of three, 
as that white privilege has been knocked down since 2008 when I was making over six figures as an interior designer and now drive a tractor trailer to keep my head above water. I haven't seen my kids but three times in the last six months because I'm on the road that much just to try and pay the bill. That's where I am. And last year, I had some tax trouble. I went to, I went to the IRS. I sat down with the woman. I had to change jobs last year. And as with most jobs, there's maybe, it might be a month, it might be a three-month waiting period to get your insurance. Well, she asked me whether I had insurance for all of last year. I told her that I had that three-month waiting period. She got on the phone, called the government health care line, and came back and told me that because I had insurance with my old job and with my new job, but didn't have insurance during that waiting period with my new employer, that I owed, and she wouldn't pay taxes because the, because the president wouldn't say you pay a tax penalty. She told me that I owed a eighteen hundred dollar penalty for not having insurance during those three months that I had to wait while I had a new job. I, you know that that. Thank you for the call, Andy. That is completely unacceptable. Let's hear. Clip five. This is the president saying, thanks to Obamacare, many are paying, he claims, 1800 less in premiums. The uninsured rate in America is the lowest since we began to keep records. And that is something we can all be proud of. Meanwhile, the law has helped hold the price of health care to its slowest growth in 50 years. If your family gets insurance through your job, so you're not using a, the Affordable Care Act, you're still paying about $1,800 less per year on average than you would be if we hadn't done anything. Line two, Bill is in Manhattan listening on WABC. Bill, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Uh, uh, yeah, thanks for taking my call. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you fine, doctor. Okay. Uh, I've been in, over here since 97. I, uh, I'm a board-certified cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon. I'm leaving New York, our family, all of us are leaving July 1. We've had it with New York. We're going to North Dakota. What, why are you leaving New York? All they want to have here are immigrant doctors with HD1 visas. They don't want the brightest and the best. What do you think I, of Obamacare, doctor? Oh, uh, I can't say over the airwaves if you get my drift. But, I mean, John Roberts, two years ago, he, he screwed us. He rewrote the law. He rewrote the law again today. And I hope he's listening. Mr. Roberts, go back to law school. You're not supposed to rewrite the law as a judge. You're supposed to rule on the efficacy of the law. You're leaving July 1st. Yeah. And by All way, packed, the whole thing. We already left. I, I hate to see in two years from now in Manhattan... Anybody needs cardiac surgery, you're going to have all these affirmative action people and <laughs> one visa people. And thank you. Thank, thank you for the call, doctor. 1 855 400 Savage. Let's go to line one. Jim is in Charleston listening on WTMA. Jim, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Idiots, um, the idiots that are screaming the racism, there's no talk about Alexander Hamilton and what he did. He was one of the founders, if not the founder, of the abolitionist movement. He was not a racist white guy. And I want to point out one more thing on the flag issue. Wait a minute, are you talking about the, the $10 bill or about the flag? The $10 bill, and I'm tying it, I'm segueing into the flag. I see. Are you upset about the $10 bill? Absolutely. Absolutely. You... Hamilton was one of the greatest uh, um, founding fathers to stand up for civil rights. Uh, when he was uh, when he helped get the abolitionist movement, and this segues into the flag, and I'll tie it together. Should, now hold on, should Michelle Obama be on the ten dollar bill? Absolutely not. She has not done, has not contributed. First lady of the country. No, if you're going to have someone on there, you should have uh, Susan B. Anthony, or how about this one? I'll concede Harriet Tubman, who was involved in the Underground Railroad. How about that? All right, what do you want to tell us about the flag? On the flag, you know, the Nazis and the KKK, they use the American flag. They use the Christian flag and the cross. So are we going to one day say that we can, we're racist because I fly, and I fly it with a light on it at night, an American flag 
and yes, the Gatson flag in front of my house, and I will never take it down, nor will anyone ever physically uh, be able to take it down, and because this is an attack on what this country was founded on. You know, free speech. We should be able to offend you. I mean, look, I love God, but if you want to burn a Bible, burn a Bible. If you want to waste your money on a Bible and burn it, go ahead. That's your right. But you know what? This is the fact that we have now become the land of the offended. I, I know, but but Jim, thank you for the call. But they're not banning the flag. They're just not going to fly it over state government. Melissa on line seven is listening in Virginia, and she's on the Savage Nation. Hello, Melissa. Hi. I want to kind of follow on from what uh, one of your earlier callers said about us not having any leadership. And I think it's time that conservatives made it clear to Boehner that if the choice is his style of Republicanism versus Democrats, I'm going to vote for Hillary because I think that Democrats have done more to increase Republican representation than Republicans have. If you look at the expansion in Republican uh, governors and state senates and senators and congressmen since Obama took office, it has been leaps and bounds above what we had with George W. Bush. So well, I Melissa, rather... you're not going to really, Melissa, you're not really going to vote for Hillary. If, if you vote for Hillary, there will never be another Republican president again. No, do you, have you heard of the Let It Burn movement online? Yes. I firmly believe that we would be better off with full speed, pedal to the floor, Democrats in charge, so that Americans can get liberalism good and hard while they still remember an alternative. Melissa, then I, I disagree. I appreciate the call, but there won't be anything left by the time people figure it out. one 400 savage This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. More of your phone calls ahead. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. This is the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro. Thanks for listening. You're tuned to the Savage Nation filling in. For Dr. Michael Savage. Let's go to line five. John is in Michigan listening to the Savage. Big build up. Go right ahead, John. Once, twice. He's gone. Kyle is listening in Virginia on WMAL. Hello, Kyle. Hello, uh, John. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the flag and kind of what it means because I hear a lot of stuff about Southern heritage and all of this. But the reality is the flag and why it flies is it is emblematical of the largest and most successful opposition to an oppressive government that this country has ever seen. So whether you want it to fly or whether you don't want it to fly, it is rebelling to an overreaching arm. And the only reason slavery got brought into it was because the South was winning so many battles and it was losing the hearts and minds of the North that Abraham Lincoln had to link in slavery to part of the Civil War. So, if you want to get rid of the flag and get rid of the fact that it means to keep the big hand of government out of our lives, then that's what you want to do. Well, but, when, when you say if you want, you mean if someone wants to get rid of it. I, I mean, I don't want to get rid of the flag. If you want to fly the flag, fine, whoever wants to fly it. But do, do you see the outrage on why some people are saying you can't fly it over the, the capital in South Carolina or in Alabama, or, or do, do you see and understand some of the brushback? I mean, the way that, uh, thank you for the call, Kyle. I mean, the alleged gunman is standing there, you know, waving the flag. It's, uh, that's what kicked the whole thing off. Remember the website, michaelsavage.com? This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. This is The Savage Nation. Welcome. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to call into the program. Be part of it today. Just dial 1-855-400-SAVAGE. one 855 400 7282. 
log on to the website, michaelsavage.com. Look for the link and boom, sign up for the newsletter, the Savage Newsletter. It arrives two to three times a week right into your inbox. It's totally free. Sign up at michaelsavage.com. While you're there, you'll also see Countdown to Mecca, the doctor's latest thriller and bestseller. Celebrate America this July 4th with Countdown to Mecca, available right now at michaelsavage.com. You'll also see the link. Now, at michaelsavage.com, you get the latest news, headlines, and Savage Scholarship winners will be announced July 2nd. 1,700 applicants submitted essays on what it means to be an American. Five winners will receive 20000 each, total of $100,000 that Michael put into this. Again, you'll see all the details at michaelsavage.com. Well, a dark day in our country, the country that used to be the United States of America, for good reason. Boy, conservatives are really steamed at Chief Justice Roberts. As the headline says, his betrayal. First, they gave him a pass. The first Obamacare ruling, Justice Roberts got a pass. Not this time. No, not this time at all. And President Obama, of course, let's hear him. He was celebrating. Millions of Americans who I hear from every single day, will continue to receive the tax credits that have given about 8 in 10 people who buy insurance on the new marketplaces the choice of a health care plan that costs less than $100 a month. And when it comes to pre-existing conditions, someday our grandkids will ask us if there was really a time when America discriminated against people who get sick, because that is something this law has ended for good. Yes, our grandkids will ask us, was there really a time when the country hits a low point? We'll have to say yes. But today, the Supreme Court did uphold Obamacare. And Justice Scalia said, well, we should start calling the law SCOTUS Care, using the acronym for the Supreme Court, saying his colleagues have stepped in twice to save the law. It was a 6-3 to vote. John Roberts again voted with his liberal colleagues in support of the law. You know, President Obama also had an interesting night. He was hosting, do you hear about this? So he's at the White House, and he's hosting an LGBT pride event and starts getting heckled. Listen to what the president says at the end of this to the heckler. I've told you that the civil rights of LGBT Americans is... Yeah, hold on a second. I, I, Okay, you know what? No, 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 no. Hey, yeah, listen, you're in my house. You're in my house. Boy, that sounds like a lamb, does it, President Obama? Who let that person in? Can I hear the beginning of that again? Listen, who even talks that way? Listen to this. I told you that the civil rights of LGBT. Americans is, yeah, hold on a second, I, 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 okay, you know what, no, 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 no. It's the people's house, though. See, notice, you know, in a moment of, it wasn't written down for him, that's how they view it, though. It's, it, the White House is not technically his house, I'm not trying to, but it's not his house, right? It, it's, it belongs to all of us. 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 7282. Let's go to line two. Frank is listening in Brooklyn on WABC. Frank's up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Frank. Hey, how are you today, John? Pleasure Very well. To you. Actually, I think there's a little more to it than most people realize. I kind of see a little Edgar Hoover going on here, and it's my contention that Mr. Obama's got a dossier on everybody because for a fella of his integrity, Roberts, that is, to him to change his opinion the way he did. Just don't sit right with me. I mean, it just doesn't. And I think maybe that's why a lot of things are going Mr. Obama's way. And as far as that uh, that woman that said she wanted to vote for Hillary, I mean, like, I just don't get that either for some reason. It's like, I would go, I'm not voting, I want a patriot. I yep. want a politician. Right. I want somebody who's for America. And that's a leader. Donald Donald Trump speaks, I listen. I like what I'm hearing. 
He's a man of his word. He gets the job done. It's a lot more than we could say about the politicians that have been in office for many years. What do politicians practice? Politics. Let's look at that. Politics. Poly, like in a lie detector test? Yes. Ticks, blood sucking insects. I don't know. Am I wrong in my estimation as to what I've been looking at for the well, last 54 years? You know what's it? Thank you for the call, Frank. You know, we had a caller that was mentioning, she, you know, vote for Hillary, let the country completely go under, and then you're going to teach everyone a lesson. I, I disagree with that. I don't think we can afford that that uh, type of experiment. And I don't think if if a Republican does not win this next election, I, I don't I don't think a Republican will ever win another election. I mean, look at the way this administration is trying to get as many illegals into Texas and into other states to try to flip them into blue states to try to get them away from red. If you let the Clintons retake the White House, I, I don't know if we'll ever have another Republican in the in, in the White House. Let's go to line four. Mark is listening in Fort Lauderdale on WFTL. Mark, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, John. How are you? Very well. Go right ahead, Mark. Yes, so uh, on the flag, um, <clears throat> just wanted to, uh, to say that I, I agree with you 100%. But the other argument is that um, why should there be any other flag flying in any government uh, institution other than an official flag like the U.S. flag and whatever state flags there are? I, 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 I agree with that. It should just be those two flags, Mark. I mean, that, that – and, and the thing about – I, I I understand. Thank you for the call, Mark. I understand in South Carolina it was it was not flying above the Capitol, but it was still on the grounds. And then in Alabama, the I believe the governor just 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 took it down. I, I understand there is Southern pride with that flag, but you can't ignore what it has come to symbolize in 2015. And you can't ignore. Look at the photo of the alleged killer waving that flag and has it on his license plate and the way it's been used and what they make it stand for and and the symbolism of it you you can't have nine people murdered in a church the killers waving a confederate flag and people say well i don't see the harm there for for that crowd of white supremacists it stands for racism that's what it stands for let's go to line eight brian is calling from eugene oregon Listening to the Savage Nation on KUGN. Hello, Brian. Mr. DiPietro, thank you very much. What a pleasure. Thank you. Hey, I'll, I'll try to be brief. I have two words and one suggestion, and they're not the two words you might think, but I have two words and one suggestion for the, the Democrats that want to that want to put the rebel flag in a museum somewhere because they're ashamed of it. The two words are Robert Byrd. And the suggestion is that okay, if you want to if you want to hide the flag, the the rebel flag, strike his name from every history book, every monument, every book that was ever written. Make it as if he never existed. He he was he was one of the worst disgraces we've ever had in the United States government. Yep, former Klansman. You're exactly right, Brian. You know why? Brian is right. Thank you for the call, Brian. And and I don't understand why. I understand that a lot of you know the Democrats are trying to make it as if it's it's the Republicans, but I, I just wouldn't take that ownership of it. I wouldn't take that at all. Let's go to line three. Bill is in Connecticut. He's listening to the Savage Nation on WABC. Bill, hello, Bill. Go right ahead. Yeah. Okay. What I'd like to say is this: uh, the, the Confederacy was an enemy nation of the United States, and flying that flag is a disgrace on any public building. We will not want to see the Nazi swastika flown anywhere. They, too, were defeated by the United States. This was the costliest war in American history, and therefore the Confederate flag should not fly on any public building. You want to keep it in your home as a souvenir, that's your privilege. As far as flying it over the state capitals and the states that want to keep it, look, you lost the Civil War, drop it. Forget about it. Thank you for the call, Bill. Let me go to line one. Tim is in Jacksonville listening on WBOB. Tim, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. You there? Yes, go right ahead, Tim. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was just wanting to comment on the flag. Uh, yeah, the flag represents not racism, but it does rep- represent rebellion against a tyrannical, centralized government that that's come down and just just trampled on the Constitution. But that's not what I really want to call about. I wanted to call about the Supreme Court. 
Yes, sir. And yeah, I do. I, I am a Southerner. I was born down here, and I really don't see no offense of it. I really don't. It's, it's part of heritage, part of history. And if you forget your, if you bury the past, you you you're condemned to repeat it again. Now, do you mean on health care or on the flag? No, on the flag. On the flag, I see. But now, uh, now the Supreme Court. Yes, sir. With uh, Roberts. Yep. This is this is what I'm talking about. We can't afford it. We for years I've been told I'm a I'm a registered voter. I vote in every election, and I'm just sick of it. I I hear that well. Uh, uh, you got to vote for the lesser two evils. Well, the lesser two we can't afford the lesser two evils no more. Hmm. We we've done with it. Now Je- George Bush he uh he gave us Roberts. So see uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, there's going to have to be a line drawn in the sand somewhere, and because we can't afford this no more, we we well, really can't. I'll, I'll tell you, Tim. As far as far as your governor, I want to play clip 18. Congressman Gutierrez he praised Governor Jeb Bush on immigration on MSNBC. Look at Jeb Bush right now. I mean, one of the reasons I think he's probably doing best or better in the Republican because he had a pretty nice press conference out there, right? It was a diverse press conference. There were Latinos. He spoke English and Spanish, and he was unafraid to speak both languages. And although he doesn't have my position on immigration reform, he said, you know, I don't like Obama's uh, uh, executive actions. But guess what? I'm going to eliminate those executive actions with something better. Do you think that's why Jeb Bush is the front runner right now and doing so well? We'll come back, take more of your phone calls. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. This is the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Remember, log on to our website, michaelsavage.com. Donald Trump in the news. Donald Trump's USA pageant, Univision, is dumping it because of the insulting remarks that Donald Trump made about Mexican immigrants when he announced he's running for president. Now, Trump is turning around and going to sue them. But let's hear the clip or one of the clips that Trump said that got them so upset. Well, you have rapists. They're sending us not their finest people. They're sending us people, and it's people from other than Mexico also. We have drug dealers coming across. We have rapists. We have killers. We have murderers. Why, do you think they're going to send us, I mean, it's common sense. you think they're going to send us their best people and their finest people? The answer is no. <laughs> Let's go to line seven. Jonathan is in North Carolina listening on WFNC. Jonathan, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, John. How you doing, sir? Very well, Jonathan. Go right ahead. Got a, uh, kind of an interesting story. It's very off topic, and I'll try to be as brief as I can with it. Um, I'm a disabled combat veteran. Thank you for your I service, did. Jonathan. No, no, it's no problem. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm trying to get off topic here. Um, my, uh, I was in the United States Army, and I served for right around four years. And I did my reenlistment window came up. I reenlisted in the army. They gave me the option for eight years. Well, three months later, um, the Obama administration started um, cutting defense, which you know, historically speaking, all Democrats do. Yep. Um, so I was put on the chopping block, and they told me that my reenlistment was no longer eligible. And uh, a couple, and probably two months after that, I was sent home. Uh, About a month after being home, I received a letter from the Department of Defense saying that I owed a debt of $15,000. What? uh, For a reenlistment bonus that I never received. I took them to court. I went through bankruptcy. I filed for bankruptcy. Uh. I had a bankruptcy attorney go through it. Bankrupt, uh, excuse me, a bankruptcy judge also told me that it was okay, that this is not a tax debt that therefore it would be discharged well two months after that hearing i get a letter from them saying for the government basically uh in layman's terms saying well we decided to rewrite our own laws much like the supreme court deal yes Um, that's exactly right where do things lie now jonathan what's that where do things stand now um well i'm I'm chipping away at the debt um Mm. I, i mean i work you know i do the best i can to make uh 
to make ends meet with all this. Uh, I well, I mean, well Jonathan, I, you, thank you for the call. You're seeing on the national level how they then uh, rewrite the laws, and then the words have no meaning. No, terrible. Let's go to line nine. Buzz is in New Hampshire, listening on W E Z S. Buzz is up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello, sir. Thank you for hosting for Dr. Savage. You're very welcome. It's a privilege. Two things. Number one, what this guy's racism and the Confederate flag are a shy sideshow. What this man did was commit murder. His racism wasn't the problem. The Confederate flag wasn't the problem. Murder was the problem. We don't need to pull down the Confederate flag. We need to put up the Ten Commandments, or at least Commandments 5 through 10. Now, if you do want to do something about racism and you want to blame the institution in this country that is wholly responsible for racism, the transmission belt of racism from the Civil War to the Civil Rights era, then you need you want to go after those people because ultimately they train people who train people who train people who train this kid. I know, but Buzz, who did they? Who did he kill, Buzz? Who did he kill? He killed nine worshiping devout Christians. Black people. Right. He said, Buzz, he said, I'm there to, I'm here to kill black people. I mean, you, you, you can't ignore that part of the story. No one is trying to take the flag away from anyone. They just don't want to fly it and don't feel it's appropriate to fly it over government buildings. But no one is trying to take that, that flag away. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. A lot more ahead. Keep it right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Link right there at michaelsavage.com. It arrives two to three times a week. It goes right into your inbox. It is totally free. Sign up for the Savage Newsletter. While you're at the website, well, celebrate America this 4th of July. Countdown to Mecca, the new best-selling thriller from Dr. Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca. And also, keep in mind, now July 2nd is the big day. Savage scholarship winners will be announced. You'll see the link right there on the website. Think of that, 1,700 applicants submitted essays on one question. What does it mean to be an American? Five winners will receive $20,000, each total of $100,000, that Michael Savage put into it. Now at the website, get all the latest news and headlines. You'll see the story about ISIS. Also, the story, of course, that's dominating the day. Supreme Court rules in favor of Obamacare. It's all at michaelsavage.com. And also, don't forget about the Drudge Report. Some of the headlines from the Drudge Report. Justice uh, Roberts, of course, most pivotal legal defender of Obamacare and some of the other justices. Words no longer have meaning. Rogue justices should run for Congress. An opinion even worse than you think. You can also see the trouble with Greece. As I mentioned, Donald Trump in the news. Now he's going to sue Univision dumping Trump. It's a story on Bernie Sanders on the move and a lot more. Log on at the Drudge Report. Well, it is a big day, unfortunately. Not good for America, but a big win for President Obama. This is the president speaking after the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Obamacare. It has changed and in some cases saved American lives. It set this country on a smarter, stronger course. And today, after more than 50 votes in Congress to repeal or weaken this law, after a presidential election based in part on preserving or repealing this law, After multiple challenges to this law before the Supreme Court, the Affordable Care Act is here to stay. Let's go to your phone calls. Line five is Carlos. He's calling from Middleton, New York, listening on WABC. Carlos is up on the Savage Nation. Hello. How are you? It's Carlos, the patriot of the Northeast. Very well, Carlos. Good to hear from you. Go right ahead. Quick three points in regards to the health care bill. What do you expect when elections have consequences? To all the patriots out there, do not grow weary in well-doing. Talk to your Democrat blue brothers. Talk to your libertarians. Talk to your independents. Talk to your conservatives. Talk to your Republicans in your neighborhoods, in your churches, in your private planes, in your hotels, in your pools. 
focus on 2016. Point number two, John Boehner Pelosi, your days are numbered. Their elections will come up. Focus on firing them. They are the backbone, secret backbone dealers for Obama. When the judicial and the executive branch have private deals and they coerce and threaten the ex- the, ju- the executive powers throughout Congress, what do you expect? They cow down. All right. Thank you, Carlos. Well, let's hold it right there. You can talk normal. Let's go to line eight. Jack is listening on WFTL in Fort Lauderdale. Jack, you're on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, John. How are you? Very well, Jack. Go right ahead. Uh, you know, there's just so much to talk about. I don't even know where to start. But let's start with the events of today. This this travesty of injustice that has been perpetrated on the on the United States of America and the pomposity of this president and the likes of Harry Reid are enough to make you want to, you know, catch whatever plane you can and get the hell out of this country. Um, well, it's not that easy. It's not that easy, though, Jack. And we listen. There's a presidential election coming up next year, and hopefully, then we'll finally get some leadership. And thank you for the call, Jack. And, and change in the White House. I don't know about you, folks. I'm not ready just yet to start packing up and planning on going to to another nation. Line six is Gary. He's listening on WVLK in Lexington. Gary, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. Uh, when when we start to see our infrastructure whereas our state parks, our bridges, our road systems, where we don't have the money to pay for it because we have so many entitlements, then maybe we will wake up and somebody will finally stand. I'm 90% um, believing that the... I never really really thought about the, the rebel flag until all this came out, and I'm, I'm trying to understand, but I'm about 90% sure that it's time to move on and change, but at the same time, in, in other words... Uh, Flying the flag, if it offends people, okay, let's take it down. But when and who will it take to say it's finally enough? We have finally crossed the bridge in saying that racism is behind us uh, and that uh, that type of evil will continue to exist from now on. Yep. When, when, when does it all end? What if right. the dude that, that did the killing had an American flag around his shoulders? What would be what would we be talking about today? I know it's you know I I know thank you Gary I know people like to say that but it, it's it's not he was he was like taunting and waving the Confederate battle flag and it was on his license plate and the Klan have used that as a backdrop and I I recognize in the South and you go to NASCAR or you go to a college football game and it's southern history and it's been in the fa- i i get that but you can't ignore that there were nine people slaughtered in a church by someone that is using that as white supremacist you you just i don't know how people can ignore that let's go to line three k is listening to the savage nation on wmac in georgia k hello hey how are you very um, well k go right ahead I just wanted to mention, you know, people seem to forget that the changes came to the southern flags back in the 50s. And guess who was in charge of our governments then? Democrats. Nobody seems to mention that. We had Lester Maddox. We had George Wallace. Guess which party they belong to. Yet they're beating the Republican Party over the head like they somehow caused all of this. And the second thing I wanted to say, you were talking about... You know, we couldn't ignore the fact of of this young man and the flag. But you know what? There was a man who hatched a woman, killed her because of Islamic belief. But you don't see anybody saying, well, let's don't put the Islamic flag up because of one crazy person. Everybody wants to make one thing bad, you know, and and not because not everybody feels that way. But you never hear the story of where that man went in and killed those white people. Do you fly the flag? Black under the Islamic belief, the radicalism. Kay, do you fly the uh, the Confederate flag? Right, you know. Kay, do you fly the Confederate flag? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But but Democrats are the ones. Yeah, yeah I, I know that. But I, I don't. I, I'm trying to talk to you, and you don't want to talk to me. You want to just keep talking. Just if you fly the flag, how would you feel if you moved into somebody next door and they were flying 
the uh, the 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 flag of the the Nazis Third Reich, and you had a, they had a swat sticker on the flag. Would you just say, well, I guess they're from Germany? But you know, the guy down the street. Oh no, enough, please, please. I mean, again, I tried. Let's go to line four. Randy is in Pennsylvania on WSBA. Randy, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello, John. Hi there, Randy. John, thank you. Um, I wanted to give an overview, but I want to start out with unity and end with unity. Uh, it's a small price to pay uh, for unity just to move the flag to private property. But uh, generally speaking, sir, um, years ago, mid-70s, I saw, I heard, where a forklift uh, took seven men's jobs. In the 80s, I saw computers take thousands of jobs. Now we're looking at automation and robotics that's taken other jobs, and uh, we've got a situation where people are just not going to have jobs. And so when these businesses, which normally look 20, 30 years down the road, they see it coming, and they're uh, jockeying for position to uh, save money from paying the workers, and we've got uh, cheap labor coming in this country. And so who's going to feed the people that's not working? And so uh, they don't want to do that, and I've well, apparently the president, apparently, Randy, the president is, because they, they, they seem to be, and I know, uh, thank you, Randy, I know Mitt Romney got in a lot of trouble for this, but uh, there, there does seem to be a huge, don't you agree with this, folks, there's a huge segment of the population that they, they are no longer really interested in working. They they don't mind. They may not be that glamorous and may not be the best accommodations, but if they can get through and just kind of get by with handouts, that. That seems to be the new way. I think it's horrible. Uh, it's nothing admirable about it. No one should. Part of the problem is the people that enable them. It's terrible. Especially you hear about the amount of young people that are not working. There's nothing productive about that. It should not be encouraged. But there is an element of people, politicians, trading votes. Vote for me and I'll keep all the entitlements coming. Now, someone who really... I don't know about you, but gets into my skin. And, and, and look how they, they make this so political. He always has to jab his finger in their eye. Let's play clip nine. This is Harry Reid, his reaction on the Supreme Court ruling against the Republicans on Obamacare. Today, this great country of ours, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, has survived the latest partisan attempt to deny health coverage to working families. Millions of working families won today. America won today. The Supreme Court ruled against Republicans who were seeking to strip six and a half million Americans of the subsidies that enable them to buy health insurance. It's the law of this nation. Move on. Very easy for him to say. Let's go to line seven. Jimmy is listening in Connecticut on WDRC. Jimmy, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. John, and today... As Americans, we really should celebrate. It's the 61st anniversary, 65th anniversary of the Korean War. Within five days of the war breaking out, the Americans dropped the 24th Infantry Division into Korea to stop the advance of North Korean Army. So any members of the 24th Infantry Division out there who were there that day, we salute you and we remember you today more than anything that's happened in the past week. Never to be forgotten what those boys had to go through. They were thrown into a, into a, into a hellfire. And they, they survived it, and they held, them, they held the fort. Now, um, the thing with the, before I get to why we're talking about the Confederate flag. Just get to the point you want to make, sure. Right. The Confe- Is it about Hillary? Right here, but first about the Confederate flag, it's funny that cowards are asking to take down a flag that flew over a battlefield. All right, with Hillary, I mean, I think <laughs> we're making too much out of this woman. We're putting her up on a pedestal. I'm the guy who eight years ago said the window of opportunity was closing on her. Uh, a minority could beat her in the primaries. Now, I don't know what's going to happen next year, but I can tell you this much. Republicans do not support closing the borders, throwing invaders out of here. And because of that, the Republican Party will lose election after election, presidential election, that eventually the Democrats will have a lock on it. I know you're an open border guy, John. I know you try to candy coat it and everything. I am not. You are dead wrong. Thank you for the call, Jimmy. You are dead wrong about that. I am not on an open border. This is insanity. You can't have open borders. That's anarchy. Absolutely not. Let's go to line five. Greg is listening in Las Vegas on KBET. Greg, you're on the Savage Nation. Hello. John, how are you? Very well, Greg. Go right ahead. How's everything in Vegas? Oh, it's uh, kind of hot. Well, it usually uh, is. We'll survive it. Good. You know, 
I've had a Confederate flag in my garage for like 15 years. I'm flying it today. And why is that? Because... What does that stand for? The whole war thing was not about slavery. It was about tyranny from an oppressive government. Period. Why is that why is that so important? I mean, if people of color see that flag to represent racism, why why is it important to to inflame that with them? Because it doesn't represent racism. <laughs> It's a, I, have you seen the photo of the killer or the alleged killer? Excuse me. I mean, have you seen? Do you understand why people are outraged? He's posing, waving it like he's taunting them with it, and then he goes in and kills nine people. And and you don't you don't see a connection of why they would be upset about that. We got one lunatic on the fringe that perverted the whole idea of that symbol. So I, why should we change everything we think about it? It, 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 again, it, it's hardly the first time that this has been associated in this way. Let me go to line six. Uh, Inid is calling from Lexington, Kentucky on WVLK. Inid, you're on the Savage Nation. Hello. Yes, I am. I'm on, uh, am I on the air? Yes, you are, Inid. Okay, yeah. Uh, the guy that just called that was just before me. Yes, sir. He's exactly right. He said uh, the, the, the flag is a representation of something that was long ago and was, was a, a representation of some people who fought for what they believe for. That's what the whole damn country... The American flag you're talking about, not the, not the Confederate battle flag. The American flag. We'll take more of your phone calls. Again, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. More of your phone calls coming up right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Let's go to line seven. Jake is in Alabama listening on WVNN. Jake, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. How's it going, bud? Very well, Jake. Go right ahead. All right. I'm taking a call kind of to, in regards to a call you took yesterday from the lady that was our grandfather, great grandfather that adopted nine orphans. Yes, sir. I remember that. Yes, from Savannah. Yes. Sir. You know, you're a part of the a huge problem that we have with our media today because everything that lady told about the story you would twist it you would twist it into a negative way you would take her words and just go off the rail with them I didn't twist anything about her story she said her grandfather or great grandfather adopted nine black children and and then made them work on the property as slaves how did I turn anything she, she said nothing about slaves she said they worked along with her her uncles or her father or whoever it was. Well, that's not fair. She 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 called up and was saying that her grandfather had had slaves and then told us the story of of how that came about. So I suddenly didn't say that. Like, and listen, if you you adopt nine kids and then put them to work, what else do you call that? Folks, log on to the website. It's michaelsavage.com. All the latest news and headlines at michaelsavage.com.